Hey everyone, here are some of the most underrated and overrated things in Stardew Valley. If you disagree with any of these, please let me know in the comments below. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so many people might disagree with me over here, but just hear me out. The sweet gem berry is highly underrated. Yeah, they take 24 days to grow. And yes, there is no reliable way to purchase these seeds, but they can still be incredibly profitable in the mid to late game when you don't even need the money anymore. Just split your ginger island farm into two halves. The first half is dedicated to growing sweet gem berries and turning those berries into more seeds using seed makers. You can do this with the help of hyperspeed grow and the agriculturist profession. Doing that will cause your sweet gem berries to grow 43% faster. Then on the other side of your ginger island farm, plant all of your sweet gem berries using deluxe fertilizer. Then when they are ready for harvesting, just eat some buff lucky lunch and you will harvest tons of iridium quality sweet gem berries. They sell for 6,000 gold each. Come on, you need to admit that is pretty effective. And it's fun to play around with different crops. Now for another crop, ancient fruit. Yes, I will admit that ancient fruits are highly effective since they regrow. And if you plant them in your greenhouse or on Ginger Island, they can be really good at making you huge chunks of money. But the process of getting enough ancient fruit is almost as tedious as trying to get rare seeds for sweet gem berries. Sweet gem berries gets a free pass because they are the most valuable crop in the game. But ancient fruits aren't. You can make much more money by investing in star fruit or even hops. Star fruit wine is probably the best money making strategy in the game. So what I tend to do is only place ancient fruit in my greenhouse and then use my ginger island farm exclusively for star fruit. Because when those star fruit are ready and when you turn all of those star fruits into wine, you will literally be swimming in money. And we can just buy the seeds instead of struggling with seed makers. Now, I'm not saying ancient fruit are bad, they might just be a little bit overrated in my opinion. Charcoal Kiln is actually really, really good. If you have big dreams in Stardew Valley, you're going to need tons of coal. While you can farm for coal in the mines or buy it from Clint, the Charcoal Kiln is a pretty good alternative. Okay, so this is what you can do. Buy a couple cork bobbers from Willy. Drop those in a deconstructor to turn them into 5 hardwood each. If you don't have deconstructors yet, planting mahogany trees is also a good alternative. Then place those pieces of hardwood into a wood chipper. This will then turn your hardwood into regular wood. You will get between 5 to 20 pieces of regular wood per hardwood. Next, simply drop your newly attained regular wood into charcoal kilns to turn them into coal. This is a lengthy process, but it's cheaper than buying coal from Clint. And you can do this in between tasks instead of dedicating an entire day to farming for coal in the mines. I like using this method. Yes, using the crystallarium to duplicate jades and then trading them in for staircases at the desert trader is highly overpowered because then you can just skip a bunch of levels in this gold cavern. But it's kind of boring, right? You can still get really, really deep in the skull cavern without staircases. And you will have much more fun doing it. Just get yourself a master slingshot and load it up with explosive ammo that you will unlock at level 8 combat. Get yourself two speed buffs and go crazy in the mines. The slingshot is not that easy to use, but it's really easy to learn. Before you know it, you'll be flying around the skull cavern at a crazy pace, reaching floor 200 before the end of the day. Also, make use of a desert totem so that you can arrive at the skull cavern really early. Along the way, you'll be collecting all kinds of resources. And yeah, it's just way more fun than spamming staircases. Out of curiosity, how deep have you made it into the skull cavern without using staircases? 
Berry dust is kind of known as a really bad item that costs way too much and will usually cause you to lose money. And yeah, that is a hundred percent true. Fairy dust is just not meant to make you money and increase your profitability. No, fairy dust purely exists for our own convenience. Fairy dust is really expensive to craft because it costs an entire diamond and a fairy rose to craft. But fairy dust has some great uses even though it is expensive. You can use these on solar panels to guarantee a battery pack the next time you wake up. You can use fairy dust on gold quality wine to instantly age wine to iridium quality, effectively saving you an entire season. You can use these on any processing machine to instantly Instantly complete it. It's expensive and it's never worth it, but fairy dust is indeed convenient. The only way to make money in Stardew Valley is to build a bunch of deluxe barns and fill them all up with pigs, pick the botanist profession, and collect tons of iridium quality truffles. And then just swim in the money. Wrong. Yeah, pigs producing truffles is extremely profitable, but there are two minor downsides to using them. First, they can only find truffles during spring, summer, and fall, and will be completely useless during winter. Secondly, and most importantly, pigs require quite a bit of space to actually find truffles. You can't just have a bunch of pigs and expect truffles to be found. They require a decent amount of space outside of their barns to actually find truffles. If you are looking for maximum profitability, then deluxe sheds filled with processing machines or garden pots with deluxe retaining soil is going to be a better bet. Because each deluxe shed only takes 21 tiles of space, whereas a barn requires 28 tiles but also requires space outside of the barn for the pigs to find truffles. So yeah, pigs are pretty good but they do have their own disadvantages. Goat cheese is actually kind of goaded. When your goats have a high friendship level, they will start to produce large goat milk. Turning large goat milk into cheese will result in you producing gold quality goat cheese. Then place the gold quality goat cheese into a cask in your own basement. Seven days later and your goat cheese will be iridium quality. Each iridium quality goat cheese will sell for 1100 gold with the artisan profession. And since goats produce cheese every two days, and since it only takes seven days to age the cheese, you will actually be swimming in gold in no time. Plus, you can have tons of barns all filled up with goats because they don't need to leave the barn to be effective. Don't underestimate goats in Stardew Valley. I bet you were not expecting this one, but the math checks out. Iridium sprinklers are highly overrated. Take a look at this here. In a 20 by 20 tile area, there are 400 available tiles to plant crops. With iridium sprinklers, we will be using 16 sprinklers, meaning that there will be 384 tiles available for crops. If we use quality sprinklers, we will be using 44 quality sprinklers, meaning we will have 356 tiles available for crops, meaning that quality sprinklers are only 7% less effective than iridium sprinklers. But iridium sprinklers are much harder to craft because their resources are more rare. Iridium bars and battery packs are just harder to get when compared to silver and gold bars for quality sprinklers. I guess the best benefit of iridium sprinklers is that they just look nicer on your farm. Infinity weapons are great. They really are. They are just the best weapons in the game. But that doesn't mean we should completely ignore other great weapons that exist. The infinity weapons are incredibly well-rounded. But there are two other weapons that perform one specific job better than the infinity weapons. Like the iridium needle, for example. The iridium needle is actually the best dagger in the game. It is even better than the infinity dagger. So if you are a dagger type person, give the iridium needle a try. And then we have the dragon tooth club. This weapon has the highest possible crit number in the game. Pick the desperado profession, drop three rubies on it, and when you crit, you will be blasting enemies into the shadow realm with one single hit. It's a lot of fun. I won't
own life. And those are some of the underrated and underestimated things in Stardew Valley. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with me. But for now, I will see you in the next video.